Welcome to our weekly TFL Studios show. Hello and welcome. <laughs> Brought to you by TFLbids.com because we usually talk about the trucks and SUVs that are on sale right now. Right. So uh, we're going to talk about those vehicles. We do have some really interesting ones. We're going to give you guys a little bit of news and uh, talk about some of the stuff we got going on with the fleet too. Yeah, totally. And also upcoming videos for trucks. We, we've had four trucks over the last two weeks as far as new loan vehicles. Mm -hmm. And then a fifth one arrived recently. A Thank few days God, ago. too. All right. Chevy. We know that you guys are like enough with Ford and Ram. You know, we get a lot of them, um, but we haven't been getting much stuff from General Motors. That all changed. And Andre is to blame. Thank you, Andre, for jumping well, on them. Uh, I take all the blame and all the pride. <laughs> that we're it's just, <laughs> it's, it, it took a lot of work. Yes. And so now we have a heavy duty Chevy um, Silverado 2500 with the Duramax, and it's, it's a Z71. Uh, it's a Z71. It's beefy. Yeah, it's actually really beefy. Yeah. And we've already, like in what, four days, we've done... Three videos. <laughs> three videos. <laughs> we don't sleep. They haven't published yet. So, oh, by the way, um, um, thank you for the donation. Oh, thank you, Luke. Your stepdad uh, passed away on March 27th. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, Luke. Um, and he had a 2000 F-150. They said it always felt like... It was dragging an anchor <laughs> with the 4.6. Yeah, you know. Um, well, you know what? We have one of those on sale too, or kind of like that. Yeah, uh, I, now I've driven it. He's driven it as well. Obviously, Roman's driven it. Um, the one we have, it's not fast. It's not fast at all. But compared to the other trucks that we've had that we put up against it, it's fairly efficient, right? So let's talk about really briefly the F-150 we have currently on sale. Yes. Very similar to Luke's father's uh, vehicle. Yeah, 2004, right? Um, yeah, this is the 04, which was the first year of that generation. Mm -hmm. um, and it's on TFL bids right now. It's the basically the star truck that was in our series to Helen back, no payment needed. Right. Um, and this auction um, for this F-150, the 2004, is going to be over in about 27 minutes or so. So, so that's your chance wild. to bid yeah. on it. Uh, now, it's been modified. Uh, it's, it's got a lift. It has new tires, brand new tires. Mm -hmm. uh, the lift and the tires were put on it specifically for our you know, video series. Uh, by doing that, it gave the vehicle better articulation, higher lift in general, and better grip. And all in all, the truck has performed really well. And as far as I know, mechanically, it's actually in really good shape. It's Yes, in so, the best shape of all the trucks we have. So we already published three episodes with these older trucks, um, which were kind of a cheap truck challenge, right? Mm -hmm. um, we compared it against the Dodge Ram and also, of course, Chevy K1500. This Ford, I have to, I hate to say this, Thank you know, Ford, um, I mean, Roman, this was Roman's truck, right? Yeah. And Roman, he originally beat us in the drag race. Yes, he did. Remember? He beat us in this recent episode yeah. on MPGs. So, I mean, it's a pretty good truck. And like you said, a two inch lift, approximately. Approximately. Brand new tires. Mm -hmm. Mechanically, it's pretty solid. Doesn't leak much. No. You know, it's been sitting here behind uh, the uh, studio. It's dry underneath because yeah. I actually checked because I wanted to make fun of them. Did you, did you put like a napkin down there? <laughs> I didn't put a napkin down, but I looked underneath. I knew it's been sitting there for a while. Yes. And it's had a couple little additions, plus a um, eagle on the hood. There's a sticker. Uh, we can remove the sticker or you can keep the sticker on and remove it later. Keep the sticker, and then I want you to superimpose a picture of Roman's head on it. <laughs> Actually, it's kind of funny because considering the, the things that we did in order to get the stickers on there and all that, Andre had some better stickers. He had a racing stripe. But uh, the, the, I like to call it the fire chicken because it looks like a chicken on fire, not an eagle to me. And all, uh, Roman also added an American flag on the back. and it Four also, by four sign. Yeah, four by four <laughs> sign. Actually, four by four sign looks okay. Yes. Um, and also, um, it's got a, a capper. Cab. Topper. topper, yeah, a truck topper. I can't speak. Which is, which is a Lear, which is a really heavy duty, really nice one. Yeah. Actually, out of all of the vehicles, it's the only topper or anything that we kept from the original purchase. All the other vehicles we've had in the past, we put um, Gator um, tunnel covers, tunnel covers yeah. on them. And by so. the way, um, if you were watching and following TFLbids.com in this live show, uh, a previous week we sold the Chevy mm -hmm. from the series. Yeah, the guy uh, flew out and picked it up and everything. Exactly, and I met Steven. Steven and his dad, Stan. Uh -huh. I met him at the Denver International Airport. Uh, we did a little video. That video is on TFL Classics. Uh, super great guys. Uh, we had a lot of fun. Well, what 
we only saw each other for like 30 minutes to, to an hour. Right. Uh, but it was, you could do the same, right? You can fly in, uh, one of us might meet us, might meet you there, right there, and give you the truck. We've all been vaccinated, which is a good thing, <laughs> so, and we'll still practice, you know, precautions and all that. And um, distancing. And distancing. But uh, it's, it's kind of, it's fun to do this. It's better to do this than to send it off to some place that we just don't know or some people we don't know. Or this, people who don't care. Who don't care, right. who just want to grab it and throw it into a fleet and sell it off. So this is kind of fun this way. Um, we have a lot of questions. Zach, is there anything that's standing out? Uh, let's see. Guys, I'm not wearing my reading glasses, so basically I'm looking at fuzz. It's okay. <laughs> while, while Zach is picking up a question uh, on the live show, I wanted to mention we have two other vehicles um, that auctions started today, mm -hmm. and those auctions will end approximately a week from now, but next Monday is Memorial Day. Yes. Um, so, so we may actually extend them into Tuesday uh, next week. So uh, your truck is now on sale. It's not my truck to say, <laughs> but it is the truck I kind of selected. So that is our uh, 2001 Ram 1500. Now it is the sport edition, so it has the sport package uh, with the 4x4 yeah. set up. And it's kind of rare, actually. Not a lot of them out there. It has uh, components on it that no other Ram at that point in time, Dodge Ram, uh, had at that time. Uh, so it has a factory two-inch suspension lift, uh, factory beefier tires, although the tires that are on there are aftermarket. And new. Pretty, and yeah. new. Yeah. And in pretty good shape. Um, I fitted it. Well, I had a, an exhaust fitted to it. Uh, a Flowmaster. Flowmaster. Double it's, dual. It's, it sounds pretty good. Um, I was hoping it would help with power a little bit, maybe a throttle response, but I don't think it gave it much more power. Uh, the vehicle itself, the interior is in pretty good shape with the exception of the dash. The dash pad, we, we added a pad on top of it because there's a giant hole in it, but everything works. Uh, air conditioning works, heat works. Um, best cup holders in the business, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, and we're actually going to have a video on TFL now just showing you the exact condition. Right, so I'm not going to go into too much detail yeah. of it right now. And it just hit, so that auction is going to go for a little while. But the auction well, that's up right eight now... eight days, almost eight days. That's, that's yeah. my point. Yeah. But the one that's about to close... Is the Ford. And DJ Underwood, by the way, thank you for joining uh, us. Um, DJ Underwood says, I'm not going to buy anything I get unless I get to hug the Russian bear. That'd be him. Uh... Well, as long as it's, you know, kosher with COVID protocols, we can hug. Yeah, you will probably have to wear a full body <laughs> rubber suit, no. um, you know, with a mask and no. stuff like that before you what, hug what him. You like Darth Vader? Well, okay, Zach, exactly. exactly. got We have a really good question from Dan Atkinson who asks, given your experience with Tesla, how much towing range do you realistically expect the Ford F-150 Lightning to have? You know, there's been a lot of questions about that. Excellent question. Yeah. Dan, thank you. Um, so I've been reading the comments on our original uh, post on it, and a lot of people are going under the impression that if you go to maximum weight, 10,000 pounds, and you're on a standard stretch of highway, you'll lose 50% of your charge and range. That's what people are assuming. I can't assume that from Ford because there are so many variables aerodynamic qualities of the trailer, how many axles the trailer has, so that's drag, and then of course... How big the trailer is. How big yeah. the trailer is, if it's a boat, completely different setup. Yeah. So there's all these things that sort of feed into it. Dan's a professional hauler, so he understands that. But the second part of that is, for those of you who don't know, Ford has a really cool system that they're integrating with this truck. I don't it, know if it's standard or not. But intelligent, intelligent range, right? where it calculates the thing for you. But let's just review what happened with the Tesla, right? Yeah. So we had a Tesla Model X. We put about 5,000 pounds of trailer behind it. And this was a horse trailer, tandem axles, so yep. dual axles. And these horse trailers were Cimarron. Really nice trailers. Yeah, right. really. I mean, um, for a horse. But this really. one, this is a tall trailer. It's about, I want to say, about eight foot high. Which sat about from the ground. two feet from above the, the yeah. Tesla. And it was a V-nose. Mm -hmm. So technically, it's a little bit, you know, decent aerodynamics, but... It's still, still fleet sided still, and still, and still yeah, two huge. axles. And we uh, we went from about 300 miles of range to about 100 miles of range. Right. So that actually we lost about 70 percent. But or 67 percent. There's three things to keep in mind. Yes. That's not a truck. No. So it's not towing with a frame, which would would completely change the architecture of the way the vehicle pulls it. That vehicle wasn't initially built to be a tow vehicle. Right. 
and also it's Tesla. And we did it. Tech. We did that particular range test with this horse trailer on a highway at about 70 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. Those were not ideal conditions. I mean, those are the regular conditions we test under. Yeah. Right. But if it was me, and if I was worried about range, I would decrease my speed some, you know, and mm -hmm. actually gain a little bit of range. Which is what the Ford system will tell you is basically how you're getting the most and the least range, what you're projected to do based on the trailer size, the weight, tongue weight, actual trailer, what it is and also the path you're going on, and even the weather conditions, all that's taken into account. So, you cannot guesstimate what, so let's say a 5,000 pound trailer is going to be going up and over something unless you have all of this information fed into the truck. It's just the way the system works. And I'm not trying to sell it. This is just what Ford says. Who knows, it may not work, but I think, my guess, is that the way they've been testing this truck, and we know they've been testing the hell out of it, it should outperform the Tesla with towing by a pretty good margin. I mean, isn't that a, face, a safe bet? Yeah, but I would say, so, you know, when we test gas-powered trucks, mm -hmm. let's say an F-150 EcoBoost. I'm not talking about hybrid. I'm yeah. just talking about regular gas-powered vehicles that we've tested recently. Right. Those also lose about between 50 and 65% range under heavy, heavy loads. Sure, when we're doing the eye gauntlet, those things drop yeah. down yeah. considerably. So, but the difference between gas and electric is gas you can refill in about five to 10 minutes, mm -hmm. be on your way, right, gone. Electric, you know, you might be there 40 minutes, two hours, depending on what truck you have or what vehicle you have. So we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, there, there are a lot of unknowns and, and this is the cool part. This is all new tech and we are gonna be at the very front of the line testing it. Yes. Is there another question before we move on to some uh, other trucks? There are a few more questions, but I wanted to put in a comment. So, uh, Will Be Trucking says in the chat, uh, remember these trucks are for charity. I did want to clarify with these trucks that we've been selling. Now, Baby Yoda, our 2002 Toyota Tacoma. Correct. That auction was for charity. And so was Gunsmoke before that. Right. And the proceeds are going to Mountain State Children's Home. These specific trucks aren't, the proceeds aren't going to charity necessarily. They're going to recoup our costs so we can move forward with the next project. Yes, right. and we're talking about the Chevy K1500 uh -huh. is not for charity. This Ford is not for charity. No. And also the upcoming Dodge is not. Yeah, they won't be. But we will be doing other charity auctions yeah. in the future. We yeah, we definitely yeah. will. I just but wanted to be clear. This is, this is how we stay afloat is by selling things that we've been using and then turning that profit right back into our office and buying another truck. And sticking with Will Be Trucking for a second, uh, Andre, any info on the new Tundra? Thank Boom! You. Thank you for asking. Uh, the short answer is no. The long answer and unsure answer is that uh, there is an event in, in Texas um, in about 10 days from now. Right, so, and you and Roman are going. Yeah, we're, we're going to be, TFL Studios is going to be there. Um, they haven't confirmed if, it, if we're going to actually see the Tundra or how we're going to experience it. But... But they leaked an image with a silhouette of the Tundra, what, last week, yeah. right? And all signs point to the new Tundra. <laughs> I, I, I'll add to that comment. Toyota doesn't tie their shoes without a plan. They are <laughs> pragmatic yes, and they very. are careful about every step they make with PR and, of course, with products in general. So by leaking that image and then having this mysterious event come up, it's entirely possible that it will be that vehicle and possibly some others, or it could be something completely different. It could be a nightshade version of the Tacoma with a special color. Or I heard it could be a nightshade version of the Prius. He's kidding. No, they, they... I'm not kidding. They, they teased it yesterday. Oh, for crying There's going to be a don't. nightshade dark ah. edition of the Prius. I am not kidding. Okay, but uh, we're not. We're hoping it's not going to be that. Okay. Okay. So Roger Allen says, "How's the transmission in the Dodge?" Ah, good question. Amazing, actually. Yeah, it's it's amazing. <laughs> it's absolutely it's fluid and it just shifts beautifully. Do you want to explain that? Okay. So, we, well, is it going to be a giveaway of the next episode, or should we just? No, no, it's not. It's okay. Be, we already seen what happened. In, yeah, in Moab. because we have that one thing. So in, in Moab. I've, as you know, the transmission was always struggling, right? It was in... Even in the first episode, it was struggling. Yeah, it, it had some problems. So it'd get hung up and it didn't really like shifting into fourth sometimes, or sometimes first gear was an issue and it didn't want to shift out of first gear. So we were starting to have some problems with the uh, transmission. Right? And uh, have since, since we completed filming, 
we have, it's been rebuilt. In between those very, times, very, very other things have happened, and you will see evidence of how bad it got. Before the rebuild. And then we took it and had it rebuilt. So yes. now it's like a brand new truck. And I'm not just saying that because I really like that truck, and I do, it suits my personality. Although the Ford and Chevy were probably a little bit better in some ways. But uh, yeah, so it's been rebuilt. Um, and the good news is that vehicles also had, you know, the brakes have been redone. There, a lot of safety issues have been taken care of from the past. And yeah, you'll, you'll see it on the site. You'll be able to read about other issues that it may have. And um, I got to say, I, I really like that truck. And I actually thought about buying it. And my wife had a knife. And that what, was the end of that. What, was she cooking? Something? <laughs> she did, yeah, she's going to cook me up. <laughs> she, her, her thing is she doesn't want me to get an old truck like that. She wants a newer truck if I'm going to get one. Well, that's fair. Yeah. Hey, wait, you're allowed to get a new truck now? No. Not I, now? No, I have it. Fix it, Andre. Stop. <laughs> she, She's probably not watching, but the thing is. Elise, is that, are you watching? Please stop. Oh. So, uh, kid to go to college, got another kid taking care of car <laughs> stuff. Once that's taken care of, so I got about a year and a half, then I can seriously look for a Nathan truck. So okay, we'll cool. go there later, okay? So just an update, this F-150 uh, 2004, we're selling... Um, How much more time? Uh, about 13 minutes. Uh, $6,200 is the current price, which is, you know, actually pretty, pretty um, amazing and cool. Well, considering, you know, but we have put a lot of work into that vehicle. And a lot of money was invested. Yeah. And it's a pretty cool truck. I mean, it's, it's been all over YouTubes. Yeah, one of the things about it that some people seem to like and some people seem to dislike is the fact that it has those unusual wheels and they are unusual for that truck and it came with them uh those wheels what do they come off of zach like a higher trim model or actually something? a later model it so, was a later model uh, right. this ford has a uh, 2015 uh wheel package yeah. on the 2004 so but it's still kind of cool and it, it and was roman different. really enjoyed those tires um, and wheels oh yeah it, it made him look oh like look a roman team. is here please where, don't where did you come from oh for i hate that thing what I, it's Jeff. Say hi to Jeff, guys. Hello, Special Jeff. Guest, everybody. Hello, Jeff. So what, before we get to another question, uh, I just wanted to mention some of the other truck videos we've done. Uh -huh. Zach, um, you might have some images about this. I wanted to talk about briefly about um, a light-duty Ram 1500 versus F-150 Ike. Oh, yeah. So um, I actually meet up with Mr. Truck. You know, we haven't done many videos with him in recent history. Yeah. In, in, in the last couple the of months. The whole COVID thing has really screwed everything up. So now we're kind of going back on to our old, hopefully, our old track. Exactly. And so we did um, F-150 Hybrid versus a Ram 1500 E-Torque. So we really wanted to figure out, you know, those are two kind of electrified, you know, pr uh, trucks right now, right? Kind, one of kind them of. is kind of. And yeah. we were uh, towing not super, super heavy because this Ram 1500 has a um, kind of efficiency rear differential, which mm -hmm. is a 321. 321, okay. And uh, we were towing almost 8,000 pounds. But this is the world's toughest towing test. We went up and down the Ike. So that video is coming up, I hope, hopefully this weekend. Okay, great. Uh, you will see uh, that video with Mr. Truck, uh, which is gonna be exciting. Does he get animated? Very, no, you know him, he doesn't, he only has, you know, zero speed. Or and, just maximum. Or, or maximum There's speed. no, yeah. Right, there's not a lot of in-between speeds. You guys think I'm caffeinated? <laughs> Please. So, so, so that's coming up very soon. Uh, and we told actually our project truck, which was the 65 F100, the old truck. I and mean, you know, I've said it before, but this is the fastest that, uh, F, that old F100 will ever go. <laughs> Yes, because it was going there, but between what, 65 and 70, 70 on the highway. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. It's just never going to achieve that speed on its own. So, um, yeah, so any, oh, any chance I can get behind the wheel, Dan Atkinson says, of the 65 high boy. Well, actually, Dan Atkinson is coming out here in a couple of weeks. Yes, and uh, you are more than welcome to buy that truck, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> yeah, you got to talk to Tommy. He has, he's just got a love-hate relationship with uh, no that but uh i think we could maybe bring it out to david so no it's kind of a long distance well anyway we'll, we'll, we'll work out the you'll, details you'll see it yeah you'll see it um so that was one video then and i'm not sure if we have an image of this but you and i did uh the tremor versus the diesel chevy silverado off-road video oh yeah so and that we, was an interesting video yeah, we did an off-road video uh, where we took it, not on a hard trail, but we wanted to figure out gas versus diesel, first of all, 
And the Z71 has really new beefy tires on it too. These were Hankooks. Uh, Hankook Which I've never tires. seen on this truck before. Yeah, so uh, that video is coming up to Off-Road, uh, Off-Road Channel, uh, very soon. <coughs> Pardon uh, me. Yeah, so, and then, should I keep going? Yeah, keep going. <laughs> there's so much, there's so much going on. I'm a little allergic to Jeff, just so you know, but everything's fine. Can I move him? Should no, I, should I move? I'm kidding. Oh. Um, we also did the heavy duty Ike, but that's going to take maybe um, two weeks or so to publish because we're kind of backed up with editing. Mm -hmm. So we need to edit a lot of video right now. Um, so that uh, heavy duty Ike is coming probably within two weeks. And this was Cummins diesel Ram versus Duramax. This was, now for those of you who are into heavy duty trucks, this is a hell of a match. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I'm looking forward to getting that video. Yeah, because it's kind of very closely uh, matched trucks. They really are. Yeah. I mean, and, and in different ways, but they're, it's very interesting. And we've driven both of them quite a bit now. And uh, I got to say, they're both really impressive. It's really hard to find, like, a bad truck nowadays. You know what yeah. I mean? It's just hard to find. Everybody's, you know, competition forces everybody to up their game. Yeah, so that's also very uh, coming soon. Uh, I have a question here from Dirk uh, Walker, who says, do you think the Toyota will offer a diesel in the new Tundra? No. No, I no, would I say no. I sincerely doubt it. You know, the thing about diesel is that, um, unless you're going heavy duty, most companies are trying to steer away from it. Thank you, Volkswagen. So um, it's, it's, even though we know how efficient it can be and how clean it can be, I would say public consumption is rather low. I'm willing to bet the take rate on both diesels that are, or all three diesels offered by, you know, the, the big three are much lower than the gas engine ones by yeah. a pretty good margin. And they currently, like you said, GM, Ram, and Ford are offering a half ton diesel engines. Yeah, and all of them are really efficient. They're efficient. My favorite is the GM one, by the three far. liter. Yeah. By far, I think it's a fantastic um, and engine. I don't, we, GM doesn't publish numbers, right? Exactly how many they sell. Um, but I'm guessing it's not a huge percentage. It's, like it's said, not, right? and it's, it's based on what you guys want, but also it helps them because uh, they're able to you know, show mileage numbers that are somewhat mind-boggling, over 30 miles per gallon on a half-ton truck. I mean, yeah, but nuts. I think uh, the pendulum is swinging in the United States from you know, big V8 diesel or V8 engines, smaller diesels to hybrid and turbos. Yeah, you Ford, know, Ford may uh, have cracked that code and it's swinging know, that considering way. Considering he bought one, um, it's, it it's, doesn't matter if, if no, I no, bought it's, one. Are you? You are influential. People follow what Andre does. Well, thank you. They do exactly the opposite of what I do, and then they follow <laughs> what you do. And the thing is, is that you know we're talking about the potential of what that can do, and like range. His range could be over 600 miles, and we're going to find out a lot more about what you know that type of truck can do with electric vehicles hooked up to it. It's a bunch of stuff that's gonna be happening, but the point is, you're right, and it's kind of unfortunate. It's like all of the automakers kind of missed out on really capitalizing on diesels by 10 years. You know, if they I, were 10 I, years earlier, yes, they would have just really hit it. They would have, I agree completely. Yeah. And now the pendulum is swinging it, somewhere else. That's, that's and we'll, we'll see what happens in the next 10 years. You know, yeah, we'll, we'll, I don't worry. You're not going to see too many fully electric pickup trucks in the future. It's going to take a while. I think there'll always be choice. That's Th exactly. There has to be. And once again, there that's where Ford is right now because they have every damn choice under the sun <laughs> once this electric truck comes out. Yes. Um, there's a question from The Place uh, who says, do you like so far the 2022 Tundra styling? Uh, this but teaser image. The just, teaser looks kind of cool. Dude, it set me back in my chair. Yeah, it's a lot more like grizzled and angry looking than I expected, which is good. It kind of reminds me a little bit of some of the early um, Tundra concept trucks that we saw years and years and years and years ago that looked real like fists, like they were angry. And of course, we never got them. So this kind of sort of looks like that. And if it looks anything and, like some of the renderings. But what really shocked me was that it has those, you know, amber marker lights on top of the grill. Yeah. Inside the hood, kind of on the leading edge. Yeah. Kind and of. And also um, the marker lights on the fenders in the front, which means it's a, it could be a wide body truck. So they may have Dude. some sort of super duper off-road version. We don't know. We don't know. It um, could be like the Pro Plus. I don't know, the TRD Pro Pro Plus Plus. Maybe or... they have some 800 horsepower, 1,000 pound foot of torque, <laughs> twin turbocharged V6 that is a hybrid. 
Why they not? might be a little bit more conservative than that, just a little. Usually they are, but every once in a while, Toyota will just come along and just say, yeah, <laughs> here we go. Oh, that's cute, Ford. That's, yeah, that's here's a, this. <laughs> that's Deal a, with this. Oh, and by the way, we're known for being reliable. Here you go. We don't know if that's going to happen, but it would be really cool. I wish I was going to Texas, but somebody's got to actually have a party here when they're gone. Oh, oh yeah. Don't tell Roman, though. No. Or he's watching right now, so it's... You think so? He knows that I order people. Okay. In. Anyway, so, uh, guys, the F-150 is uh, still about $6,200, uh, about three minutes left, maybe about four minutes, depending if there's any last-minute Usually action. there's last-minute bids here and there. I'm willing to bet there's going to be a couple that'll pop in. So, yeah, um, the F-150 is still there. Um, and remember, it has Essence of Roman inside. And other essences, I think. <laughs> no, it's, uh, we cleaned it out quite a bit. It's yes. in pretty good shape, and it smells much better than it did initially. Oh, my God, yes. Yeah, that's, uh, uh, that's a fortunate thing. You know, one thing about that truck that I really like is those little service doors I thought were silly at first, the, mm -hmm. but the amount of stuff you can get behind the driver and passenger seat is actually huge. Yeah, it's good, like carry-on bags or tools. or. I stuff. can get my entire tool kit in there, no problem. Yeah. And, I, it's and it's a decided. regular, technically a regular cab, but, it, but, exactly. but it's got little tiny doors. It was really, I wonder who, who approved that when they were designing it. I don't know, because it seems like extra parts, right? Extra parts. You would think parts. so, yeah. exactly. So, but yeah, well, so, it's kind of so an yeah, interesting we'll thing. See. And also, just really quick on TFL bids, uh, we also have the 73 Toyota Land Cruiser. That's FJ, right. Uh, FJ40. Beautiful blue one. Yeah, it's a, it's a blue one. You actually saw it in person. Mm -hmm. uh, I did a video on it, too, which is a part of the... Uh, page on TFL bids. I believe. Yeah, totally. And that's also um, auction ending next week. Mm -hmm. So Tuesday, Tuesday, because Monday is a holiday. Uh, what's interesting, what I've noticed is that a lot of used car prices on newer used cars are flying through the roof and it's sort of going backwards. So I'm noticing the older the car now, prices are starting to rise. A lot of that has to do with the chip shortage. People aren't buying new cars as much and people are pumping up the prices of used cars. The good news about an auction site is that you don't have to worry about it quite as much. And also, no chips are involved in ancient Toyota FJs. And by the way, um, you, if you saw the video uh, this weekend, uh, the third episode of the series with the Ford, yeah, uh, Roman got really spectacular fuel efficiency, almost 17 mpg. When I saw that, I almost fell you know, on my butt right there at the gas station. Yeah, we saw that. Your and you made fun of me. Of course you yes, did. Yes, I'm aware arms, of that. Your arms are flailing. Well, it was a real thing. Oh, Roman heard you about your party. Is this, is this your pirate flag? <laughs> Keep it coming. <laughs> so, so that, yeah, I mean, 17 MPG, when the fuel prices are going up, I mean, that's And special. bear in mind, this is after this thing, bear in mind. <laughs> bear in mind that this is after it got a lift and after it got really meaty tires, two things that usually don't, play into a more efficient truck. But Roman's efficiency, not only that, but I think he had, he had like a quarter of a tank when we were completely empty. Oh, don't talk about yeah, this Yeah, I mean, he, he was basically, and he even said in the video, I'm bored, I can keep on going. Hey, Zach, what do you got? I just wanted to give a shout out to Dave Murphy, who just did uh, 20 bucks in the Super Chat. No, no Thank way, Dave. Thank you so much, we appreciate it, Dave. Dave Murphy, Does you're he have a, Did he say anything? He, he said, a, you are amazing. He said, you are amazing. Uh, you are amazing. Well, Dave, I have something for you. A pirate's chest. <laughs> <laughs> Roman, are you going to take my entire office and just bring it? Um, actually, this isn't really for you. I, I don't mind getting rid of it. Though, what's it? in your booty box? Oh, uh, this is left over from our... But we do take, you know, you use props. You about exactly what you call that. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> oh, and you're bringing... Wait. Hey, puppy. Hi. Doggy. Oh, he's, oh wait. The dog doesn't want to go out. Just, just going to knock over hey, all guys. our limbs. Hey, guys. Have you seen our bike channel? Well, we have bikes. We have razor bikes. We have electric bikes. We so have, we have gas-powered bikes. So the thing is, is um, what what happened was uh, Razor reached out and uh, wanted us to test some of their products. Now, granted, that's a little small for Andre, Roman, and myself, but we fortunately have Case and Alex, who between the two of them, I don't think either one of them is a buck twenty soaking wet. Um, so. We are going to have them write a whole bunch of stuff. We're going to do a bunch of videos on this. And they've already been featured in other videos that we've done, uh, which is kind of cool. So enough with the <laughs> treasure chest. Thank you, Okay, Robin. I think the auction is over. <laughs> so what do we got at the end of it? Uh, 6,200, it appears. Okay. 
That's that's still, you know, it's good money for that truck, I think. I think it's fair money considering what we spent and what we added to it and the fact that Roman was driving it. He, <laughs> Roman, are you going to autograph that truck when we're... We put a, he says a, no. He's not going to autograph um, it. Okay. okay. <laughs> so congratulations to whoever got that truck. I, I really do think it's a good truck, so great. Good for you. And yes. While we're talking about the F-150 for a second, there was... Yeah, I pulled the flag out of Jeff's face. Uh, um, Luca1234 put a $5 super chat that I don't think we got to. Oh, thank you, Luca. I'm sorry we missed that. He, Zach. No, no, I that know, was right? in the beginning. He said, do we cover it? Yeah, we did. Oh, okay. uh, his dad passed away. I'm sorry, Luke. Yeah. My, my condolences. And sorry, I thought we didn't cover that. All right. So, uh, but thank you nonetheless. Stepdad. I'm Stepdad. Sorry. But nonetheless, thank you very much for helping us out you know th these types of things i mean as silly as these props are we do need them for the videos we produce and you'd be surprised that money goes right back into the company yes uh, another question from uh, dylan schnapp who says i'm thinking of getting the hybrid tundra if if there is one if there is one how do you like your hybrid f-150 andre so i would say uh the f-150 hybrid so far and i have about 1700 miles on it so not a ton of mileage because we had some other trucks that we were testing. But you still have driven uh, it, you took it off road, you yeah, banged it on snow. I have, I, I towed not much, just a little boat trip, uh, about 10 miles. Um, I love about 95% of it. Ooh. Um, and recently I was driving it just, I think yesterday, and I noticed there was one kind of a harsh shift uh, when I think the truck was in electric mode and the engine was about to come on and I asked for power, you know, I just kind of uh, press on the accelerator and there was a little kind of a clunky shift in that transition. But if I'm a little bit more relaxed, it's just a very nice, cool, smooth truck. Very, very fast. Oh my goodness, guys. And we show that to you, right? Under six seconds at here at mile high above sea level. It's the second fastest pickup truck we've ever driven. Other than the TRX. Yeah, other than the TRX. So it's, it's I love, like I said, 95 to 97% of it. And then there is like once in a while, there'll be like a little hiccup but it never, you know, there are no issues other than the rusty axle. Um, it's no just surface breakdowns. rust. Surface rust. Surface. No breakdowns, no engine lights, no other hiccups. I, I, I really enjoy it. It's going to be interesting to see how this truck performs, let's say, five or six years from now. But so far, Andre comes in with a smile on his face and he wants to get a tattoo, like a tramp stamp above where his Volkswagen no. tramp stamp no. is. That says Ford. No. Um, because he just loves his truck so much. And, you know, we're, we're all happy for him. Uh, he loved it so much that he whamped it into a tree. That was awesome. But did you have to We have there? video footage of it, dude. They've seen it. I'm still <laughs> trying to buff that out, <laughs> by the way. I thought your wife was going to nail you in the head with a two-by-four. Well, let's just say there's still time for that. <laughs> um, Sorry, guys. Daniel is asking. We can wind down now, right? Yeah, absolutely. Daniel... Kingston is asking, is Andre going to go all electric? Uh, not in the immediate future for the truck. I might. Um, I'm not because I still need to carry my boat, which is about 6,000 pounds. Sometimes we go to um, either uh, Navajo Lake, which is about 400 miles, mm -hmm. or Lake Powell, which is about almost 350, 400 so miles. So either one of those would require at least one, if not two stops, possibly three. Right, so I think I'll use my hybrid for the next couple of years and see how that the works. The hybrid makes a lot of sense for towing. The thing is, um, I, I, I think that a lot of people are, are, are assuming that people are gonna try to do cross-country trips with electric vehicles. Right now, it doesn't make a lot of sense because charging times take a while. But a majority of Americans, and I only know this based on just the stuff that was fed me, but I now know it's, for tr it's true do a lot of short distance driving. So if you are a two or three car family and if you have one electric and one gas or one electric and one hybrid or whatever, that can work really well. I have an old Nissan Leaf that my daughter is driving. She's a high school student. She has hit everything. I'm what? surprised she hasn't found, you know, Bat Boy from the Inquirer or whatever and bounced into him. She, despite beating this thing to death, it is still up and running and, we're, we're, and it's a really good first car. It limits her distance, but it doesn't really matter. She could still travel 70, 80 miles without much of a problem. And she goes back and forth to schools. She's looking at colleges and going around and blah, 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 blah. And 
excellent, excellent car. And we started using it more and more often as gas prices started going up. Then my wife started driving it back and forth to the grocery store, back and forth to work and whatnot. And then I bring it into the office about two times a month and that saves me about 50 bucks on gas. Guys, this type of thing, if you have a couple different vehicles and one of them is an electric, that's where it works. So I'm just kind of my two cents. I would agree 100%. My wife is dri currently driving the BMW i3 mm -hmm. with a range extender. That's the one that we used to have here. Yeah, that TFL used to own. I bought it from the company and she loves it. And she's not actually using the range extender very much. Really? She's maybe used it once or twice in the last three months. So her 50 mile commute is actually just fine on electricity. So That car actually hauls butt too. And it's, it's pretty fun. Yeah, yeah I, I enjoy the it was one of the ones I was looking at. But the reason I didn't get it, the only reason I didn't get it is because the back seat holds two people and we wanted something that could hold up to three. Right. And it's got the suicide doors, which are kind of not very convenient. Yeah, right? but she so, doesn't she doesn't use it to haul the kids that often, right? Not too much. But now, you know, volleyball games, soccer games, as they, know, yeah, all they, it's stuff. all kicking back in now, yeah. too, right? Yeah. yeah. So I'm sure you guys have to deal with that as well. Uh, so Parnell um, had had a comment. He said, uh, "Bring back by the number reviews." Maybe, yeah, we we, can, we, sh we should. Maybe we can. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I, I think should we wind down now? I mean, I'm not sure if there's another question, Zach, that you have. Noticed. Anything else before we go? Uh, Ford Mustang fanboy asks, "I'm starting to look into buying my first car or truck." Would it be a Mustang? <laughs> Yeah, he's thinking about buying an old Ford Ranger. Do you think that is a good truck to buy? I do. Oh, yeah, I, I think Zach does. Uh, well, I had one too. My, my parents actually had one as an extra vehicle with the four liter V6. Yeah. If you get the four, don't get the other ones. There's like a 2.8 or whatever. But if you get that four liter V6, it is still by today's standards an extremely powerful engine. Unfortunately, it's not the most efficient truck around, but it hauls really well. It tows quite well. I think it was a great little pickup truck. So yes, absolutely. Um, Zach, you got your own opinion on it? I completely agree with you on that four liter V6. It's the engine to get. Yep. Uh, it's not the most efficient, like you said. But the thing is about the modern Ranger compared to even modern half size trucks is it's small and light. Yes. Which does have its advantages in places. And it's easier to, you know, easier to drive, easier to maneuver. You it, should get the Splash Edition. There is the Splash the Edition. Splash. They had some off-road editions, and they had like step sides and some other things You know out what? There. Didn't they have a Tremor back in the day? They did, but I think it was a sticker package. I don't think it was like a real... Oh, yeah, not like a true, true off-roader? Nah, I don't think it was like, you know, like it is now, but they had other ones that were. So let us know what you get if you decide to do it, okay? It would be awesome. And I think that does it for today. Yeah, it is. Uh, and uh, stay tuned. You know, next week, uh, you should probably see some Toyota news. It might be the Prius. It might be something else like the Tundra. It could be. Or a brand new Tacoma that is all electric. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Relax, Toyota guys. All right. We'll all right, see you next you time. We'll, thank we'll see, you. We'll see you next week.